Now, remember I told you that not all square roots and not all cube roots are friendly integers. In our examples, we mostly had integers because, you know, at the newbie level, you want to keep everything a little simple, but realistically, that's not true. So what we have to do is talk about something that you've talked about in the past, in years past, called rational numbers. Rational numbers are, are integers, but they're also decimals and fractions and those types of things. So a rational number, which you should have heard that before in years past, is any number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, and a and b have to both be integers. So for example, like 0.2 over 7 isn't a rational number because 0.2 is a decimal, not an integer. Every rational number can be written as a decimal that will either terminate or repeat. That should also be things that you've heard of before. You've heard of terminating decimals and repeating decimals. So let's look at some examples. We've got terminating decimals. Terminate means to end. So these are decimals that have a, a clear ending point. This has two decimal places. This has three decimal places. This has two decimal places. So the number of decimal places ends. In repeating decimals, you can have a pattern and then dot, dot, dot. That's a way that you show repeating decimals. So this number of twos never stops. Or you can have a pattern like this, 383838. Eight, eight. Remember, the bar shows you that it repeats. Or you can have like something like this, which is basically the same thing, 0 0.015. So we'll go 12, 0 0.015, 0 0.015, 0 0.015, etc. And you should already know this. So let's practice with some decimals because as we go through our square roots and cube roots lessons, we're going to deal with decimals. So if you forgot, the way that you turn a fraction into a decimal is you just do the division. This bar right here, this fraction bar, means division. So what you do is you just ignore the 1 and you look at the fraction 4 over 25. So what you then do is you do 4 divided by 25. The 4, the numerator, would go inside the box, and the 25 goes outside. So you add some decimals. This is like from, I don't know, 5th grade maybe. So 25 goes into 40 once. So then you subtract, you get 15. So 25 goes into 150 six times. So the answer is the terminating decimal, 0.16. Oh, sorry. Then you have to put the 1 back in front. And so it's 1.16. Okay, now 5 30 thirds is very similar in the letter B. We're going to take 5 and divide by 33. So I do 5 divided by 33, add a bunch of zeros. Okay, let's go. So 33 goes into 50 once. Subtract, you get 17. 33 goes into 170, I want to say 5 times maybe, mm. 165, oh now I'm back at 50, so it's going to go in once, right, so I can see, right, I see this pattern happening, so it's going to end up being like that, so the decimal is... 0.15151515115, etc., or you can just use the bar. Very important fact right here in this box all terminating decimals and all repeating decimals are rational, so you can write them as fractions. Even if you don't know what fraction 1.16 is, it's this, by the way. Even if you don't know what fraction 0.15 repeating is, it's this, by the way, you should know, You, I'm telling you right now, that there exists a fraction somewhere out there in the universe that is equal to that decimal. All terminating and repeating decimals have fractions that are equal to them, even if you don't know what it is. Now, I told you that even if you don't know the fraction repeating decimals, can be written as fractions. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. So you first start off by saying that x is equal to your original decimal. So I'm going to say x equals 0.8888, you know, repeating. Okay. 
Then what you do is you look at how many digits are repeating. So in this case, I only have one number repeating, so it will be one. Once you figure out that number, then you're going to use a power of 10. So if there's one digit repeating, I'm going to do 10 to the first. In letter B, we'll look at what happens when there's more than one digit repeating. So 10 to the first is 10. So then I'm going to multiply and see what 10 times x is. Well, 10 times 0 0.888888, if you remember back from elementary school, you learned that when you multiply by a power of 10, or maybe in science you use this idea, you move the decimal point. So 10 times x is 8.8888, right? Okay, I'm going to put a zero in the front just to make things a little simpler. Now what you do is you subtract. So 10x minus 1x is 9x. And then the cool thing is that all of these 0.8s cancel each other out. So you just have 8 minus 0, which is 8. So then now one more step, and then we have it. You think back to chapter 1 and how we got the variable by itself. So we would divide both sides by 9. So x equals 8 ninths. So what that tells me is that if x is 0.88888, that is the fraction 8 ninths. Let's look at the next one. In this one, we have two digits repeating. We've got 1.25, so both the 2 and the 5 are repeating. So the first thing that you do is you set x equal to your number. So x equals 1.2525. 2, 5, etc. Okay. Now, since I have two digits repeating, I'm going to multiply by 10 to the second, which is 100. So the number of digits stands for the power that you use. So 100x would be, move the decimal twice, you would get 125.25. 2525, etc. Okay, so let's subtract now. You get 99x equals, and again, everything after the decimal place cancels. So you have uh, 125 minus 1, which is 124. Divide by 99. So x is equal to 124 over 99. So that would be the fraction for this. The weight of an object on the moon is about 0.16 repeating times its weight on Earth. So that decimal looks a little different because only one of the digits is repeating. So we'll look at that in a moment. An astronaut weighs 192 pounds on Earth. How much does the astronaut weigh on the moon? So the way that we would find out how much the astronaut weighs is by just doing simple multiplication. We would do 192 times point or 0 0.16 repeating. But then the question is, how do you do 192 times 0.16 repeating? Well, you could use a calculator, but I'm going to show you how to do it without one. So let's use our same rule. We're going to make x equal to our decimal. So x equals 0 0.16. Point one six, but only the 6 is repeating. Okay. And then since there's one digit repeating, we're going to do 10 to the first. So that would be move the decimal once, so we get 1.6 repeating. Now this case, all the decimals don't cross out, because when you go to subtract, you'll get 9x equals... 1.5. Only the sixes cancel, not the very first six, the repeating sixes. So you divide by nine, and so you get 1.5 over nine. So like, you know, that's not really helpful. Um, let's see, if I double it, that would give me three over 18. 
And then what I can do, now let me bring it back to the original question, it's 192 over 1 times 3 over 18. So that gives me 576 over 18, and that gives me 32. So I get exactly 32 pounds. And even if you did type it in the calculator, like up here, 182 times 0.16 repeating, you would get a decimal, which is a rounded value because your calculator stops putting sixes at one point, even though we know mathematically the sixes continue. So uh, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you talk to me next.